Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. In the long evolution of man, the few thousand years of so-called civilization have only lasted since the day before yesterday. The veneer is thinner than a single coat of furniture shellac, and beneath its surface, seethe and boil all the savage instincts that will take many more million years to cool. This is the story of a man who found that the demons which haunt us are not from the beyond, but rise up to engulf us from within. I maneuvered this so that the big, heavy, reeling drunk with his bottle and a paper bag was between us. As the crowd moved forward in anticipation of boarding the train, hidden from Zeke, I pushed against the man so that he lurched directly against Zeke. Caught off balance, Zeke's foot slipped off the edge of the platform, and Zeke started to fall helplessly in the path of the unrushing train. Mystery drama, Loser Takes All, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Patricia Elliott and Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. They say that there is a woman for every man, a man for every woman. Since there are more women born than men, this can't be totally true. And in fact, in practice, it doesn't work out anyway, because as the world spins, they may not necessarily meet. But there are women whom few men can resist, and for whom a man could be as ready to sell his soul as Dr. Faustus was to the devil. A woman, for example, like Delphi Carr. It was the end of the summer. I finally had it made. All the boot-licking, fast-dealing, double-crossing, throat-cutting, knives on the back, wheedling behind me. Jim Ebbing was dead, and World Talent Enterprises Incorporated was mine. In the theatrical agency business, I was kingpin. Here I was at the Venice Film Festival playing God with the best suite at the Gritty Palazzo Hotel, a cabana at the Lido Beach, and the world my oyster. An oyster that suddenly I found contained the pearl beyond price. Per favore, si sponte perché mi cobra da sole. Ah, how was that again? Uh, an American, I should have known. Would you mind? You've got me in the shadow. Oh, sister, that's one place no one's ever going to put you. Thanks for nothing. You're hulking in the way of my suntan. Oh, and supposing I take one giant step. How's that? Just bully. Now I have the sun back. Suppose you just keep on with the giant steps and walk right out of my life. <laughs> You've got to be kidding. Now I've met you, you'll never be out of mine. That's your problem. I'm trying to rest. I guess you don't know who I am. I guess I don't. No want to. Goodbye. Jake Alexander. Uh, World Talent Enterprises? You mean you handle actors, show people? Well, that's part of it. How about magicians? You handle them? Yes, a couple, but Well, I... then make like one, please, and disappear. Well, first off, I'd like to talk about handling you, whoever you are. <laughs> that's about as gauche a proposition as I've ever had. Well, you know I didn't mean that. I meant as a property. That sounds even worse. All right, personality. What's in a word? I'm not an actress. How do you know? It doesn't really matter anyway. Jimmy, is that how you see me? Queen of the X-rated movies? No, no, no. Now, look, Miss... Mrs. Oh. Have I turned you off? Good. 
In fact, goodbye. Oh, not that easily, no. Valley Atque Ave. Latin. Farewell and hail. Isn't that upside down? The message is hail and farewell. I'm a physician. In this country, it doesn't take a woman long to find out that all men are. Look, we've been talking at least two minutes, and I still don't have your name. I gave you mine. And I thought your number. Now, maybe I'm not all that sure. Could you possibly be serious? I was never more serious in my life. You want to talk business? Uh, business, business, I mean... Well, I think the sun's gone down for the afternoon. No, no. I can get up by myself. You haven't answered my question. You asked my name. That one I will answer. I am the Principessa Albagano. Adia, senor. No hail. Just volley. She was a princess, all right. She lit up even a bright, sunny Italian day. But if she thought she could brush me off that easy, she was less bright than I took her for. First off, the married angle and the Principess of it didn't face me. The Principuti, or whatever the male half of a princess is, was kaput, dead, smashed up on a Ferrari. I'd read about him in the papers. So that took care of that. Second, this babe was dynamite. She had what every agent looks for first. It's got a hundred names, but what it boils down to is money at any box office. And third, she was just what this agent wanted. For me. Personal. My Duchess, enjoy the show. Principessa. I got a better title. Star. Superstar. And uh, this. And what is that, Mr. Ten Percent? Contract, all options open between you and me. You are one small bundle of solid gall, aren't you? Oh, quite. You give me three years. I'll make you the biggest star in show business. Doing what? Being you. Where? How? Ooh, it would take a little planning, the right spotting, training, lessons, coaching, a showcase or so off Broadway, talk shows on TV, and then movies. I have no ability. I decide that. You got class, beauty, style, and most of all, something that jumps right out and grabs a man. And women, too. You got to something that makes you a religion, an object to be worshipped, something for any plain Joe to put on a pedestal, and for his wife to know you're so far above her she don't get a nose out of joint. She ain't the one up on that pedestal. You know, too far off for her to be jealous, but too tempting not to shut her eyes and identify with you because that's where she'd give her eye teeth to be. In three years, I guarantee you can ask any producer for anything you want. And somehow he'll find it. I don't need money. So you'll like the public acclaim. No. No, I'm a very private person. Just wait till you've tasted it. You'll change your mind. Look, one man isn't enough for you. Only after you've had them all at your feet. Then you'll settle for one. Thanks for the hangnail analysis. <laughs> You're quite a parlor psychiatrist, aren't you? In my own way, the best in the world. You could trust me for one thing. I know talent. Now, you want to sign this? Don't be ridiculous. Excuse me now. I have some friends waiting. Take it with you, will you? And then see me when you get to the States, either New York or L.A. How did you know I was coming to America? <laughs> I make it my business to find out things I need to know. How could I leave Europe unless I knew you were going my way, too? Hmm? Okay. Delphi. So... You found out my name, too. Wasn't hard. There's quite a file of press clippings on you. Delphi Carr. Good name for the Marquet and publicity. Oh, and the uh, Principessa and the European playboy you're no longer married to. Uh, they're all naturals. Like you. See you stateside. I doubt it. Don't. Just remember about old Mohammed in the mountain. And don't call me, I'll call you. Oh, well, excuse me. I've kept my friends waiting quite long enough. Goodbye, Mr. Alexander. I got that a word out. Uh, I've been picking up a little culture myself. Let's just say, uh, arrivederci. I couldn't get that funny little man out of my head for the life of me. Although I should have. Because all the dreams he was dangling in front of my nose, I was going to pay for dearly. 
<laughs> I shouldn't say funny little man. A little short, yes, but not funny. There was something about him, a magnetism, a superhuman influence that made one a believer, no matter how incredible the dream. And though I didn't let him know it, I only half knew it myself, yet. He had me hooked. He was going to buy me what money couldn't. Deke. Dale. Oh, oh, lover. Darling. Maybe we better close the door? Oh, maybe we better. <laughs> Come on, sit on the couch. I have drinks waiting. And you can tell me all about your interview. Oh, that. Oh, darling. No good. Same old story. Not enough credits. No agent. Oh, Delavretti was charming. He sent you his regards, but regrets there was nothing for me in this picture. Maybe the next one. Well, maybe there will be. Oh, sure. Only by then I'll be back in Scranton at the gas station. Ah, oh, come on, Del. What's the use of kidding myself? I've given it my best shot and I blew it. Well, all my dough, anyway. Deke, you know money isn't any problem. It may not be for you, but it is for me. It's so silly. I'm just wallowing in it. it. It's more than enough for both of us. I've done a lot to try to have an acting career, but that's one road I don't go down. Well, think of it as a, as a loan. I don't take loans I don't see how to pay back. And I don't live off any woman. No matter how much you love her? Oh, look, then don't do that to me. If we were married... I can't marry you, Delphi. I can't even support myself. <sighs> Deke... Stop thinking of yourself. Think of me. You're all I think of. I wish it were true, that damn money. It doesn't mean anything to me. Don't you understand? I paid my dues for it. Eight years married to that vain, twisted pervert. I thank heaven he's dead. Mother, was the money all that important? It was. When I married him, it was the only way to save my father from at least disgrace. And my mother... And at 19, there was some glamour about becoming a princess. Yeah, but that's the whole point. What can I offer you? One bad marriage for another? You. You offer me everything. Love, tenderness, belief. Deke, can you cancel that silly excursion round-trip airfare you have? Look, you know I can't. It's like an actor's contract, a uh, uh, play or pay. So junk it. I'm going home by boat. Sail with me. Honey, I can't afford it. I haven't any money. Let me buy your passage. Oh. Now, look. No, don't interrupt. Just take it as a loan. A small one. That I can guarantee you'll be able to pay back within a month or two. How? That's my secret. Allow me to have at least one. I did better than just meet the Leonardo when she got into New York from the Mediterranean. I hired a launch to intercept her at customs with three dozen American beauty roses to say welcome home to the Principessa. And I was waiting as the liner docked in the 50s to greet her, not knowing the bomb she was going to explode. I mean, Jake Alexander anticipates everything. He runs things his way. If you're a czar, why not? You pull all the strings, right? Wrong. Just look, for example. Pepper. You see, this time I buy the titles. Not because I ever felt you were less than that in my book. Look at all the press I gather for you. You haven't changed. For your concern, I never change. I uh, still got that open contract. It would be nice to make it while the fourth estate is milling around to record it. Are you going to sign? Not for me, but for a man who is my whole life. Deke. I should say, Douglas Roberts. If you're as great as you are, you can make him into a better and brighter star than I could ever be. So, here's the challenge. Jake Alexander, I'd like you to meet the man I married on the boat, my husband, Deke Roberts. Husband. Behind my eyes, the explosion was blood red. I wanted to kill him. Question about it, no doubt, with all the options in my life and my connections he had to be disposed of. The only question was how. I don't suppose that at one time or another in our lifetimes, any of us has not just for the moment dreamed of disposing of someone we dislike or hate by violence. 
quite certain that it was only a human reaction which never would have results. But wild and irrational things happen in life once we loose emotions and ride on them without realizing the consequences. I'll return shortly with Act Two. The Triangle. In plane geometry, it comes in six shapes. Right angle, isosceles, equilateral, obtuse, acute, and scalene. Also, who cares except high school students or anyone who has to use the knowledge in his work? But in human relations, ah, that's something entirely different. The triangle is not a constant. It is an ever-changing mystery capable of infinite variations, just one of which we are returning to. This special triangle with a girl named Delphi in one corner and two guys named Jake and Deke in the others. I'm 6'2", I go about 185 to 90. Once I dug a career in the pros, but nobody picked me up. Big deal, I wouldn't cry. The money would have been good, but what really turns me on, or did, was cars. I'm a better than good mechanic, but after four years in the shop, I got bitten by the bug. I wanted to be an actor. Well, I'd always had it in the back of my mind. So, anyway, with enough to get by on for two years, I gave myself the chance. I was lucky. I got a small part in this movie, the start of it all, and a big break when the film was picked up for the Venice Festival. I'd never been to Europe, so uh, I took a chance and caught an excursion there. What the heck, I was still under 30, my life could go anyway. Until I met Delphi. Then there was only one way it could go. Ever. Her way. <laughs> But he's not interested in me. It was you. Jake, he's a flesh peddler. Let's lay it right on the line. Jake's interested in anyone who can make money for him. Sure, sure. But as long as you brought up the subject of flesh, it isn't mine that attracted him. I'm not interested in a career. I have no talent. I don't think Jake Alexander saw you as talent. Don't say it. It makes it all so cheap, and I don't want it to be that way for you. Deke, honestly, I think Jake Alexander is a very special man. I told you I was going to get him to handle you. In a way, our whole future hangs on that. It's why we got married. Okay, okay, darling. For you, I'll go down any route just so long as you're mine. So I can keep you mine. But I want that one thing straight. What, lover? I'm jealous. I'm jealous all the way. You're mine or nobody's. Who else's would I ever be? <laughs> The question for me still was just how to handle it. Deke, oh, that ridiculous sophomore name, Deke had to go. There was no problem for me to destroy him as an actor or a personality, but that wasn't enough for me to win Delphi for myself. He had to be wiped out as a human being, as a living entity. And the question was still how. And then fate kindly took a hand. Hey, Diggy. Hi, Mr. Alexander. Oh, come on. Agent, Clyde, we gotta be friends, huh? <laughs> so, Jake? Okay. Jake. That's better. What are you doing down here on the east side? Oh, no college friend is in settlement work down here. I cut out whenever I can to give him a hand. Ah, yeah, with good public relations. Yeah. What are you doing here, the wrong side of town? Oh, I got my own crazy kind of drives. I was born in this area, but who knows me anymore? Oh, it's no man's land for me, too. My friend was even out sick. I could have saved the trip. Hey, how about that? You, uh... You going up to him? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hail a cab. Don't spend it before you make it. Something I learned on the Lower East Side. Besides, there's a... There's a subway on the next corner. What's the matter with that? Oh, nothing. You lead the way. Just tell me where I'm going. Just tell him where he was going. That was for last to ask a man who had murder in his heart. And it was the perfect time for what I had in mind. An area where nobody knew us could connect us. And right at the rush hour. I never really can get used to the subway. Well, you have to be born and bred in New York to appreciate them. Uh, I don't know what happens to people on these platforms in this <laughs> jungle. 
Yeah. You're pushing, shoving so much a guy's got to fight for his life. Well, I should bother a big, healthy guy like you. Why not? All the years you played football, you ought to be able to take care of yourself. Isn't the killer instinct second nature with you? Oh, yeah. Come on, Jake. Fuck off. Football was just a game. Not so much for pushing and shoving and body contact in everyday life. Survival of the fittest, baby. Yeah. Everyday, any day life. That's what it's all about. <laughs> you always sound so tough. I don't really believe you are. I wouldn't count on it. I have to be where I am. Yeah. Sure, sure, I guess so. <laughs> to make sure my clients get what's coming to them. Yeah. Well, you always manage to deliver. Oh, you feel that way? You've been doing all right by me. big heavy man was between us. As the crowd moved forward in anticipation of boarding the train, I pushed against him, shoving him directly so he would push Deke off the edge of the platform. <laughs> Only at the last moment, I couldn't go through with it. Phew, hey, that was close. Thanks, Jack. I, uh, I gotta protect my investment, huh? Oh, you sure did on this one. I thought I was a goner for a moment till you grabbed me and pulled me back. Uh, just lucky I was around to grab you, I guess. So forget it. Life's a gamble, anyway. Huh? We're all here today and gone tomorrow. Huh? That's a funny thing to say. Well, what do you mean by oh, that? Nothing, Deke, nothing. Just, just, uh, just nerves, I guess. The way you almost bought it. Yeah, well, I know it. Except for you. Oh, forget it. There's always tomorrow. <laughs> I'll tell you, honey, he's my guardian angel. Damnedest thing, this, this old drunk, he would have knocked me right onto the tracks in front of that subway if Jake hadn't grabbed me and pulled me back. Oh, darling, thank the Lord for him. But most of all, thank God you're still here. Yeah, yeah, you're right, baby. Thank the Lord for Jake. Whew. Fantastic. Not only my career is in his hands, but now my life. So I couldn't do it personally, all right. There were other ways. I had connections. I wanted Delphi enough. And I did. So I put in a call to Las Vegas. Hello? Uh, Bernie. Who else? Who's this? <laughs> How many people got your private number? It's Jake. Jake Alexander. <laughs> you old conniff. You in town? No, I'm uh, flying to the coast tomorrow. Oh, ah, you're going to stop off in Vegas on the way? And drop another bundle to you in the tables? I'll buy you a drink. Oh, big deal while you take me to the cleaners, huh? <laughs> Now, are you, you want to do something, uh, something real big for me for a change? Just name it. Bernie, how, uh, how do I go about getting a guy totaled? <laughs> you guys in show business, always a big laugh. What, are you writing a play now? I asked a question. I heard it, I What's heard it. What's the answer? Come on, will you? Grow up. How would I know? I'm a businessman. You have connections? Jake. Stop putting me on. Even if there was something like you read about in the paperbacks, it don't operate that way anymore. So, what else is new? Oh, nothing right at the moment. You know, uh, maybe I will stop by Vegas on the way to the coast. <laughs> you got to be kidding, Jake. I was never more serious in my life. But not on the phone. Who's the guy? A guy named Deke Roberts. He's a client of mine. You couldn't just break the contract? It isn't like that, Bernie. He... He's in my way. Mm -hmm. So, I make a connection. We'll rub him out. Where? When? Give me a date. And where? Well, I'm bringing him out to L.A. He's up for something good. Might build a future for him. Mm -hmm. So, let me know when. He won't have to worry about his future no more. That Jake is dynamite, honey. He's got me up for the Senate Guard. It's a terrific part. Oh, that's wonderful, Dee. Well, it's not set. I have to make a test. On the coast? Yeah. Fine. We'll fly out together. How soon? Uh, the test is set for the uh, beginning of the week. But, but Jake suggested I might want to stop off for a few days with him in Las Vegas. Would you like that? Well, I've never been there. He's laying out the dough. Well, for me, anyway. It's part of our contract. The trouble is... The trouble is nothing. If I want to have a little fling in Vegas, I can afford it. How can you stop me? Well, I can't. Oh, Dell, baby, I don't know. It just, just eats me up, this, this living off of you. Something I swore I wouldn't do. You're not living off me. Jake pays you a salary. 
And someday you'll be making so much money it all won't matter. Someday? It's going to be a long haul. Not with Jake behind you. You think a lot of him, don't you? Yes. Well, why wouldn't I? For one thing, he saved your life. Yeah. Yeah, he sure did that. In more ways than one. And he's a winner, Deke. When he wants something, nothing will stop him until he gets it. I'd put all my faith in him. Okay, Barney, he's on his way here. He gets to Vegas on the noon plane. Flight 947. Mm -hmm. What's he look like? Well, there are pictures in this envelope. Publicity, portrait shots, every angle. Good, good. Name again? Deke Roberts. Well, how, uh, how do we set it up? Just leave that to my boy. He'll handle it. There's just one thing, Bernie. He's, he's bringing his wife with him. I don't want to take any chances of... I mean, look, nothing's going to happen to her. I got to be sure of that. Cool it, Jake. I get the picture. You want the broad to yourself. My boy takes out the husband, right? Yeah. We'll uh, only be here over the weekend, so... When do you figure? Jake, I make one contact. Then I got nothing to do with this. Nothing. I never heard of the guy. Wouldn't know him from Adam. Now, let's drop it. Okay, buddy. Oh, maybe, maybe one thing. With the babe and all, just make sure she don't tag along everywhere. Can you split them up, say, tonight, tomorrow night? Well, I didn't want to have any hand on this. Suit yourself. Just wanted to make sure nothing happened to the chick. Okay, Bernie, okay. I'll make sure. I'll set up your pigeon. So there it is. As simple as that. Deke is in Jake's way. And as Delphi has said of him, Jake is a winner. When he wants something, nothing will stop him until he gets it. Which makes Deke a loser and Delphi the prize. Yet, Las Vegas is the gambling capital of America. And any time you gamble, even at the worst odds, you can lock out. I'll return shortly with Act Three. The die is cast. The step is taken and I cannot draw back. So said Julius Caesar when he crossed the Rubicon. King Richard III expressed it a little differently. I have set my life upon the cast and will stand the hazard of the die. But in this case... Jake Alexander's is not the life that is in danger. And die doesn't mean dice, but death itself. I met them at the plane. Two beautiful people. The knife really cut deep to see how well they suited each other. But my want for Delphi, my need for her, blotted out any strings of conscience. I'd been uneasy knowing that somewhere a hard, stone-cold pair of eyes were measuring the victim for his coffin. But that was wiped out by my own surge of desire for this golden woman who now meant my whole life. <laughs> Hello, kids. Welcome to Never Never Land. Hiya, Jake, old pal. Oh, oh it's so good to yeah. see you, Napoleon. <laughs> what worlds have you been conquering lately? No, no, no. The only member of the ruling class here is you in name as well as character. Preach him, as <laughs> oh, A diplomat as well as a sales. No, just a plain wheeler dealer, in this case, with everyone's best interest at heart. Hey, Jake, you really think I have a shot at this picture? You better believe it. We're starting to get near the payoff. You know something? I love you, Jake. Well, like a fellow says, that goes down. Well, come on. Let's go make sure everything's set up just right for you. Uh, Jake wants me to meet the director of the picture, darling, so you finish dressing for dinner. I'll be back to pick you up. Can I come down and join you? Uh, no, the director isn't here at this hotel. He's over at the Sahara Vista. I'll grab a cab. I'll run over there. I'll be back within the hour. Okay, darling, but don't keep me waiting. I miss you every second you're away. I was biting my nails. 
Oh, the director was in town, all right, and I had made the appointment. But the hidden appointment was a big one. Somewhere, going or coming, Deke Roberts was going to cease to be. It was almost impossible to sit and be myself with Delphi as we had drinks in the cocktail room. He ought to be here pretty soon, don't you think? Well, it's a good sign of his late, I think. Maybe he and Hugo hit it off pretty well. Oh, I hope so. You know something, Jake? Uh, what's that, Duchess? Duchess. Do you call all your girls that? No, no. Even when I had them, which I don't anymore. Just you. You really know how to set up a woman, don't you, Jake? Just how to love one. Oh, dear. Maybe Deke does have some cause. Cause for what? Well, what I was going to tell you. My husband is very jealous of you. Me? Yes. He knows that next to him, I love you better than anyone else. You? You love me? Well, it isn't difficult to learn, given the teacher. And given the fact that you're saving our marriage. As much as we love each other, I don't think it could work unless he's a success. For either of us. So... You see, you hold our lives in the hollow of your magic hand. It's... Well, Jake, what is it? What, what's wrong? Uh, Duchess, excuse me. I, I, I've got a call. I have to make it. Believe me, it's life or death. The whole thing hit me flat in the face. This deal was all wrong. Oh, forget the morals, but just on a practical basis. With Deke dead, Delphi would only mourn him. And I was shut out just as much as I was now. But the other, oh, I should have thought of that first jealousy. A motive as old as hate and more effective than death. That was the way to do it. If I could only get to Bernie in time. I, I was sweating like a pig. I tried everything I knew to locate him. And this was the last chance. Yeah? Bernie, it's Jake. Call it off. I don't know if I can. No better, you just gotta. I'll do what I can. I'll get back to you. I'll get off the line. I don't know what I said to Delphi for the next half hour. I must have been as good an actor as any of my clients because she didn't seem to notice I was on the edge of losing all my marbles. But somehow I kept up a front until... Excuse me, Mr. Alexander. Call for you. Oh, thank you, waiter. I'll, I'll, the phone's I'll take... already plugged in. You can take it right here. Oh. Oh, well, well thanks. <laughs> Jake Alexander. You know who, Jake. Signal's off. Your boy is safe. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Are you all right, Jake? Huh? Oh, oh, yes, sure, sure, never better. I've never seen you like this before. Oh, how? Well, with all your defenses down, you're just so human. Oh, well, I guess it's a thing most people forget about us, 10 percenters. Now again, we're human beings, too. Whose skin was I really trying to save with my sudden change of mind? I'll let any of you judge. And the rest of the story doesn't get any prettier. Oh, it was easy enough for me to pull all the strings. The controls were all in my hands. The jobs that somehow never quite materialized. The constant stream of controlled publicity about Deke as a young stag. Both hunted and the hunter. Well, it's getting so that you spend more time with me than Deke does, Jake. Well, he's building a career, and I'm resting on my laurel. Does he have to build it, running around with every sex pot starlet while I sit at home with you? Oh, you don't think he enjoys running around with these bird brains, do you? No, I guess I don't. Frankly, it's not their brains that has me worried. Oh, come on. Fresh is a commodity in L.A., not something to lust after. You've seen one, you've seen them all. Or if you've had only one, maybe you'd like to check out the rest. Now, you seriously think that any woman could hold any attractions for Deke after you? Oh, what do you think? Well, you know, since the first moment I shared the sun with you, no other woman ever could. I didn't mean you. I was asking you about Deke. Oh. Well, you know, maybe his head is turned a bit. Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Don't worry. What would he do without you? Jake? Yeah? How long? When is he going to get a job? Well, I'm doing my best. He was so good in that picture in Venice. For you, honey. 
The trick is to make the rest of the world agree with you. Oh, I was masterful, all right. And Iago dripping the careful poison of jealousy into my female Othello's ear. Slow but sure. Destroy Deke's image. Bring her to the point of seeing him for the handsome, empty hulk he was. Teaching her to be ready to cut him out of her heart and leave room after the divorce for me to fill the gap. Just two things I didn't allow for. And that's where it all went wrong. Well, it's getting around that time. Dell, I, I better be on my way. Why must you go so soon? Well, lone lady at home, no husband about. You know how tongues can wag in this town. <laughs> Let them. I just wish they had something to wag about. I just wish that that was the reason I asked you to stay. Well, that's a funny thing to say. Not really. Oh, Jake, darling. All I mean was that I... I wish I gave something to you ever instead of just taking and taking. I enjoy giving and giving. Oh, you're a lamb. <laughs> Even if it's your fault that I've ended up as a movie star in the making widow. Who is his nubile, succulent, photogenic doll for tonight? Oh, I don't remember, Dell. He and the press agent pick him out. You mean Deke makes the dates himself? Oh, well, sure. I mean, after we've screened them... Oh, now, you're not jealous, are you? Yes, damn you, I am. But I'll swallow it if that's the way it has to be. Jake, could I ask you something? Could you help me to get a gun? A gun? What for and why me? I, I don't want to get Deke upset. I, I don't even want him to know about it. But, well, last night there was a prowler around. I, I think there's been one a couple of times before, and I... Well, frankly, I'd feel more comfortable if I had some protection. Oh, sure, honey. You'll get it. It's just with Deke out of the house every night, sometimes till early in the morning. I... Anyway, you, you can help me buy one or whatever it is that you well, do. Well, you do better than that. I have a gun. I, I never use it, so you can have that. And from now on, you've got a guest for the evenings when Deke is abroad. Thanks, Jake. But, but I don't think you should be here too much. I, I don't want to worry Deke or do anything to interfere with his career and, well... Well, what? You'd never believe it, you sweet old darling, but Deke is really jealous of you. <laughs> that was a rocker, all right. But if I had any doubts about my Machiavellian operation, that stilled them for good. I had even more incentive to get Deke out of Delphi's life for good. Because now I, I had some hope. It was worth all the deals, persuading the girls to keep them out late, to compromise them every way they could, paying the photographers to trail them, waiting for that set of prints damning enough to be sure Delphi would divorce him. Sure, it was taking time. But slow or sure. But that night, a sudden decision to take the gun back to Delphi brought the whole thing to a head. Well, you didn't have to bring this back tonight, Jake. Well, I wouldn't have slept easy knowing you were worried. Look, I, I don't mean to rush you, but, well, Deke should be home at any minute. All I'm right, afraid. I'm on my way. What's that car running? It's mine. Shows my intentions were good. I left the motor running, huh? Good night, man. Good night. And thanks. Mm. Mm. <laughs> well, that makes it all worthwhile, huh? See you, baby. <laughs> I watched the car go by me where I'd hidden in the bushes. Seeing the car lights in the driveway, I parked my car in the street and walked up the drive. I had a hunch I was going to find what I was going to find. It all added up after what my date had blurted out just a half hour ago. All those evenings, Jake had been paying these dames to keep me out. Everyone in town knew he'd been bad-mouthing me at the studios, queering every possible deal to hire me. Big deal, big friend, some agent. That was the big contract my wife had bought me. Don't lie to me, Dell. I know it. I know what's been going on. Dee, please, honestly, there is nothing between Jake and me. What was he doing at the house, huh? With the car running? Why did he take off the way he did the moment I get home? Don't you think I saw you in each other's arms? Oh, darling, you don't understand. Please. I, I was thanking him for something. Thanking him for what? Well, nothing, really. I... Oh, well, for this. A gun? 
Holy mother, it's gone that far? You think you needed that to get rid of me? Rid of you? Well, what are you talking about? That's the last thing Damn I Damn right, it's the last thing I let you do. Here, give me what? that. Give it to me. Because anything's getting rid of to be done. Oh, Zeke. Oh, Zeke, I love you. Don't let me die. And you killed me, Zeke. Dale! stopped outside when I saw Deke's car. I had a hunch to go back, but before I'd made up my mind, the first shot came. And the second made up my mind for me. They were both dead by the time I got there. I sat down and cried like I haven't since I was a baby. I was still crying when the police came. Oh, I made it easy for them. There didn't have to be an investigation. I... I confessed. What the hell was the difference? I didn't have anything left to live for. And in the eyes of God and a conscience, I rediscovered... I had killed them both just as surely as if my finger had pulled the trigger on my gun. That I'd never used. <laughs> Poetic justice, yes, but not much solace to two innocent victims of a man's unnatural desire. Poor Delphi Carr and Deke Roberts were losers in this dangerous game. Perhaps the only mitigating circumstance is that the man who had to win for once ended on the losing side, too. I'll be back shortly. No one who ever went through our school system can have forgotten Euclid and his volume of geometrical propositions, all neatly solved in the beginning, leaving you only the task of proving them. But one triangle he didn't mess with, the human triangle. That's one proposition which has no answer at the beginning. For it, you have to wait till the end. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Paul Heck, Ian Martin, and Nat Colan. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.